In this video, we will be discussing sequences of numbers in R. In the previous section, we saw how one can manually create vectors using the C function. In this section, we will instead use the sequence function to create vectors containing series of values generated by incrementing or decrementing from some initial value. To create a sequence, like say the integers one through 10, we can simply write one colon 10, where colon is the shorthand notation for generating the sequence. Alternatively, we can use the sequence function itself and pass one and 10 similar to above to achieve the same result. In both of these, the initial value for the sequence is one and the final value is 10. And we're using the default step size of one to generate all the intermediate values. The intermediate values are actually generated until they exceed the final value, in which case the sequence itself is terminated. And of course, all values greater than the final value are not included. And this will work for both integers and floating point values. Also, this will work in reverse. So we can actually start, say, at 5 and then end the sequence at negative 5, like so. If we open the help page for a sequence, we see that there are actually a few arguments that we can pass to modify the behavior of the function. The first two are from and to, which we've already used positionally to specify the starting and ending values for, say, this example here, 1 and 10. However, we can explicitly write out these as keyword arguments to the function, and we'll have more about positional and keyword arguments when we cover functions in R later on. So for now, just know that you can specify the name of an argument with its value when you call a function. So to do that, we're going to type sequence. And then for our initial value, we're going to type from equals and our initial value. So let's say five. And then to repeat this example, we'll use the two keyword argument with negative five. We then run this code block and we see we get the exact same output as we did before using the shorthand colon notation. The by argument we see below in the help can actually be used to specify the step size or the amount that we want to increment or decrement to get the next value in the sequence. So far we've used a default of one or, or negative one as was the case in the sequence five to negative five, but we can specify a different value using this argument. The length thought out argument can be used to specify the number of elements that we want to appear in the sequence. We'll come back to along that width argument later, but I'm sure you can see that the sequence function can act quite differently based on which subset of arguments that we pass it. For example, if I want to sequence with say five elements, starting from four and then proceeding maybe in steps of three, I can write sequence and then say we want five elements, so length equals five. And then I'm going to say from four, so that we get the initial value of four in our sequence. And then I'll say our step size is three by saying by equals three. And when we run this code block, you see that we get exactly that. Now note that I did not list the arguments in the same order as they are in the help file. When using keyword arguments, the order is no longer important since we're specifying which argument receives which value. If you omit the argument's name, however, the order becomes important. Now again, we're going to discuss this further when we get to writing our own functions, but for now, I just want you to be aware of it when you see it in example code, that if an argument name is given, the value following an equal sign is the value that argument takes regardless of the order it appears in the argument list. Now in all our examples so far, we've specified our starting point, right? We've specified the from argument, but the sequence function itself doesn't actually require that. So we can actually omit the from argument and simply write, say, sequence with length three and two, four. And we see that the sequence function is smart enough to determine what the starting value should be. Now, we skipped the along.width argument a moment ago. And what this argument allows us to do is to generate a sequence with the same number of elements as another vector. This is equivalent to setting, say, the length argument to the length of another vector, but it does so much more concisely. So for example, let's create a vector x with some random values. So we'll say x, left arrow, and then we'll use the c function with 4, 5, 2, 7, and 1. And now we're going to create a sequence starting from, say, the number 9. And then we're going to use along with to specify that this sequence should have just as many elements as our vector x. So in our output, we see that we have five elements, one for each element that was in the original vector x. Now, as an aside, if you're following along in, say, an R manual or 
many of the resources. You may notice that the argument names here are not exactly the same as used in some of those other references. And the reason for this is that argument matching in R actually supports the use of partial matching. So you can type, say, a subset of an argument's name, and as long as there is a unique match amongst all other arguments for that function, then R considers it to be a valid argument name. So if I repeat the last example, we actually don't have to fully type out a long dot width. We can instead use only the first three characters, A-L-O, and you will see that we get the same output, no errors. I can even add a few more characters and this still works, or even more, and this will still work exactly the same. Now, this is nice, and then it can save us some keystrokes. However, it can be a little confusing when you're just starting out, since the example code may not match the documentation exactly. So I did want to point it out so that you're aware of it, just in case you see examples where only a few characters or even one character of an argument name is given instead of the full name. To wrap up this section, I do want to point out another function, which similarly to sequence can help us to create vectors, and that is the repeat function. This function simply repeats a vector that we pass as an argument by some specified number of times. To do this, we write repeat or REP, and we pass a vector. So let's say we create a vector 42 and two, and then we specify the number of times that we want to repeat this vector. So three, for example. And we see here in the output that we have a vector that has six elements consisting of 42 and two repeated three times. 